just the idea of having Peter in a game like this actually intrigued me. And I think to some, maybe that sounds crazy because you look at a game like Atletic at San Mames. I mean, it's one of the most, it's one of the rudest awakenings you can have to La Liga. It's just be thrown into the fire at San Mames in that environment, in that kind of atmosphere. Um, but I, I feel like I was a little bit vindicated with that idea by the end of the 90 minutes, just by watching how the game unfolded. I was, I'm curious to know what you think. There was a lot yeah. of, there was a it, lot it, of, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry. So I think, as you mentioned, like, uh, these are the little things that I think Real Madrid could have. There was opportunity to line them up probably in a different way. Uh, even as like our number seven uh, in the hole as a number 10, we haven't seen that in a while, by the way. That uh, And even Ancelotti was talking about it in the pre-match press conference that he's not entirely sure that if he's going to go with the 4 3 eventually he did. And uh, obviously, uh, like Jovic as a traditional striker, could also might also have worked probably uh, from the beginning, but I think I can understand why Ancelotti decided against that because if you play that, Jovic can't play on either wing. Like he he's not as good as uh, you know getting out of close situations or close uh, spaces uh, as good as a winger would be. So once you have started Jovic uh, and Benzema up top uh, in a flat four four two, you're you're pretty limited in what you can morph into during the game. So I think probably that's why Ancelotti might have decided against that. But even with the lineup, uh, as as you mentioned, I think the other things, there there were chances of other things being happening. But about Peter, uh, again, uh, it's a daunting task to go to the San Marcos and uh, Athletic Bilbao, who were actually on a high in this game, especially because how how well they performed in their previous game. And we were under a little bit of pressure having drawn the previous game. So Ancelotti kind of had to go to his safest option, which he did. But Peter had a cameo. We we would obviously uh, talk about that later into the podcast. Uh, But uh, squad management-wise... Uh, again, he chose the safest option because I think that's what he felt most comfortable with going into this game, thinking that it it might morph into something else as the game progressed. But I didn't necessarily see a lot of morphing during the game, apart from some small phases. Uh, for the large stretches of the game, Real Madrid stick to one specific plan, uh, which didn't obviously come to any fruition in the second half. So... I, I don't think Peter would have started regardless of what I what I thought, obviously. Um, Ancelotti in the pregame presser said, he, he literally said, I don't have a right wing forward, which means that in itself means I'm not feeling Peter because Peter literally is a right wing forward. And he's not like, so when he says that. And he are, plays the left, left, left-hand side winger in the, uh, when he played. He was on the left today. Um, so... And, and also, like, in games past, you know, he hasn't trusted Miguel when he could have. You know, he waited extremely, extremely late um, to make any subs this game. I, I really felt, I feel like he didn't have any trust in his bench. Um, but here's the case for Peter, to me. Hazard is just walking in transition, it seems. He's going in slow motion, and... You need like there were op- there were opportunities where we had space on the right wing to just bring the ball up from point A to point B quickly, and Hazard had room. He had the ball at his feet, and he had like forty yards ahead of him, and he just he just comes up the field ever so slowly. He waits for Athletics defenders to 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 push up, and we had numbers. We had there were moments where Vasquez was sprinting on the overlap. Uh, Vinicius was there for a cross field switch, and he's just going in slow motion. Contrast that with Fede Valverde. When he gets the ball on the right, he's north south. He's gone. He's it, within split seconds. He's 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 just taken the ball up the field and he's actually gotten us in, in an advanced position. Peter would have taken advantage there, um, and I think that's that's the main case. It was actually really really difficult for me to watch Hazard in this game, and I'm I'm probably one of the more um, I'm one of the last people on the Hazard Island. I'm not there like. I'm not like on the island, like camping, but I'm like, I feel like my boat like is like anchored like a little bit off the island. 
it's there just in case you know I can I can close enough to Eileen to get back on if he has a hat trick. But I'm also like the anchor is like slowly pulling away. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm close to the island. Most people are managing Madrid. They're already on the other side of the continent. They've already crossed the island off the map. I'm kind of there, but like today was it was really hard for me to watch him today. It, and 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 I was a little bit surprised at the post game dialogue for some, from some people about and that were praising him. Uh, I actually liked him a little bit better in the second half against Cadiz, which was something we've already discussed. I'm not going to get into it now. Ancelotti had some post game quotes that also surprised me today. So here are a few. We, you can. This is your first uh, s- segment of agree or disagree on the Manager Madrid podcast. Okay. I do this with Matt right. and Ohm sometimes. All right, sure. So the first thing that Angelo did after the game was he highlights, he goes out of his way to highlight uh, five players. Nacho, Lucas Vazquez, <laughs> Eduardo Camavinga, Fede Valverde, and Eden Hazard. Uh, he says, quote, they have fully complied. And then he says, Hazard and Vinicius understood well what they had to do defensively. They worked, had commitment, they had quality in the attack. Uh, and then he also goes out of his way to praise Hazard again. He says, quote, Hazard is good for the team. He played this this game better. He had doubts about his fitness. He struggled. He tried things. Now he's back. I don't disagree with all of that. I agree that maybe he's working hard and obviously he struggled and he's trying to get back physically and he's back. Fine. Um, I don't like and I don't know if if this is another ploy, if this is like maybe he's just trying to boost his value, boost his confidence. I don't expect has, uh, Angela to come out and say bad things about Hazard. I actually, I, it's not that I'm saying what he's saying is wrong in that sense. I, I would probably do the same as a manager. But my question to you is: Do you fundamentally agree with what he's saying there about Hazard? Uh, I I don't actually. I don't agree uh, because obviously he is not a manager who is going to like bash and put out right and. Uh, but my thing is, if Rodrigo and Asen- Rodrigo or Asensio are fit, uh, we would have Rodrigo, uh, Benzema, Vinicius, or Asensio, Benzema, and Vinicius in both of these games. Uh, because again, from our number seven, I haven't seen anything spectacular uh, that uh, that can you know warrant for this kind of praise. Necessarily, yes, he was uh, he was a bit better against Cadiz in the second half. But these two games have more or large been the same what has his last five or six games or cameos for him that have been. there hasn't been much much things to look for look about and the other thing that that did not impress me or like kind of frustrated me a little that he was even when he was inside the box for a lot of moments uh Fede Valverde and Lucas Vasquez were you know itching to probably provide the ball to him but he was not move he was just standing between two defenders usually what happens is when Benzema is coming down the side or even Luka Modric make this kind of intelligent run sometimes into the box he wasn't making those runs today even when he was inside the half space or the box so yeah I I don't agree fundamentally with Ancelotti said he obviously would would like to boost up his player and say positive things and I think that's that's what happened but if Asensio or Rodrigo are fit he doesn't play this game um, no, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, like, I, I, I think the other thing is, like, part of the reason why he played well against Cadiz in the second half was because he stopped being a right winger and he started to come over to the left yeah. and he started to combine with Vinicius and Benzema. That's why I thought when we saw the lineup, it was going to be something more like that where you have... It's not a symmetrical formation, and we but we didn't see that shift in, in this game. I you know so, I actually think when one when two of the wingers come over to one side and overload one side, that actually has worked for us in the past few games. We didn't see any of that today. Um, mm-hmm. So we've gone. I don't know, like I don't know how far we are into the podcast, but I feel like it's been too far to not talk about Benzema. I actually feel a little bit dirty not talking about those two Benzema goals within the first seven minutes. I kid you not, when he lets fly on the first one, I as improbable as it seemed in that moment, I was like, that's a goal. Because I, I my, my mind flashed to the past. I've seen him score that before. 